trumpet's gonna sound so loud One day it'll wake the dead In the twinkling of an eye He'll split the eastern sky And I believe he's coming back Like he said I believe the time is near Welcome to our Clyde River Baptist Church service for Easter Sunday. Uh, you'll notice we're not in church this morning. As you probably know, the weather's not that great today, so we had to cancel our service uh, in person at the church. So we're recording here at home, and we hope that you will be watching and listening and celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ on this Easter Sunday, wherever you are. Let's have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day you have given us, and no matter where we are, we can celebrate the true meaning of Easter and the resurrection that we celebrate, that Jesus rose from the dead so that we could have salvation and that he could live in our hearts even today. And we do have that hope that he's coming back, as he said, and I just pray that each and every one will have that as their personal faith in God, that they would know that Jesus is coming back and that he's coming back for them. We ask that you bless this Easter service and all those that will be listening. In Jesus' name, amen. You'll know this one. Sing along, everybody. I serve a risen Savior. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living. Whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer, and just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives, he lives, Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Be 
the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. When they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes they gle that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. <clears throat>
plan this morning was to be together and to share communion. And Lord willing, we'll do that next Sunday, the Sunday after Easter. But uh, as we sing this song, we just hope you'll listen to the words that um, Jesus chose the cross with every breath, the perfect life and the perfect death, but he chose the cross. And as we've all said in even recent weeks, it wasn't nails that held Jesus to the cross. It was his, his love for us that gave him the self-discipline and the determination at all cost to hang on that cross. And he could have called 10,000 angels, as the hymn writer wrote many years ago, but he didn't. He didn't call any angels. He died alone because of his love for you and his love for me. Listen to these words. If you know them, sing along. If not, try to learn the words so that you can at least sing the chorus with us as we go along.
Well, if you're anything like me, you often feel the need for restoration. And thankfully, the Lord has, has done that for us uh, through His life and His death and His resurrection. This morning, we're going to take a look at, uh, at the Easter story. And just before we do that, perhaps you would pray with me. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can gather here today uh, via electronic media. And uh, we recognize, Lord, that we are challenged in so many ways with COVID-19 and, and uh, illness and sinfulness and dysfunction and lack of communication and, and so many things. But despite all of our difficulties and our limitations and our infirmities, None of it moves you to, uh, to dysfunction in any way because the sovereign God of the universe is not moved in any way or, or marred from your purposes. And so, Lord, today we come to you as needy children and we just pray, God, that as we look to your word, that we would have hearts that would listen and respond in obedience. And we just thank you for this Resurrection Sunday. And we pray, Lord, for those who are listening who may be hurting from from various uh, problems and challenges and trials and, and pain and uh, so many problems in this life. We pray, God, that we would realize that Jesus lived and he died, but he destroyed the power of, of death and hell and the grave. And so we look to your word this morning. We pray that we would just uh, really learn something today, perhaps that might help us in the coming week. And the honor and glory goes to your son, in whose name we pray this prayer, Jesus' name, amen. Well, this morning's message is called Finishing Well. And uh, I can't help but think my, my uncle, my, my mother's, uh, she went to be with the Lord uh, three years ago. And, and uh, my uncle, just, just a very few weeks ago, he was the last one in that family, Uncle Ernie. And uh, Lyane and I would visit him from time to time and I always had wonderful visits with him. Maybe two years ago, he said, uh, would you sing uh, a song at my funeral? He was on dialysis for a number of years. And as far as we knew, his health would continue to be reasonably well for a period of time. But uh, last summer and fall, he began to feel very ill. And, and he went to be with the Lord on March the 2nd, just a few weeks ago. But he had asked that we sing a special number at his funeral, and that was called It Is is finished. Well, Jesus said those very words. He said, it is finished. He hung, Jesus, our Lord, hung on the cross for six hours. And at that time, he, he made seven statements that have been recorded. And we're going to look at those in just a few moments. But, but the torture of our Lord during that six-hour period, none of us will ever, ever know. My grandfather lived... Uh, nine hours. Many, many years ago, he had a stroke uh, on a Monday morning and, and lived nine hours. And I know Lion's father had a brainstem stroke and he lived, I believe it was 10 weeks. And and then at, at some point, each of those men, and it could be others too, at some point, it is finished in this life. It is completely finished. Well, the Apostle Paul said, "My the time for my departure is near. And he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. <clears throat> and not only to me, the Apostle Paul said, but also to all those who have longed for his appearing. <clears throat> you see, Paul's journey was nearing completion. He was finishing the race. Well, Jesus finished his race too. And what a race it was. Jesus, who for the joy set before him, endured the cross, and he completed his race. And my understanding, I see that race in three stages. The Gospels record um, the six hours that Jesus was hanging on the cross and, and the statements that he made. But there's more to his race than that, and I want us to look at that this morning. <clears throat> Jesus, uh, as I said, said several things that have been recorded. In the first one, he said, Father, forgive them, for they do not realize what they are doing. Luke chapter 23, verse 34. 
Um, the irony in that statement, Jesus, the very one who could have called 10,000 angels, he was asking his father for forgiveness for those who were put who had placed him on the cross. The reason he was there was to save them, and they were the ones who were uh, destroying his physical life and, and thought that they could destroy who he was and, and the power and the presence of his life. And here he was, he was praying to the very people, praying for the very people who had caused his suffering. You see, he came to earth with the purpose of forgiving sinners. He loved them and he forgave them to the very, very end. It was because of my sin, and I trust you see your sin too, that he was on the cross suffering on our behalf. Jesus also said, he said, today you will be with me in paradise. He spoke these words to one of the thieves who hung on one side of him on the cross. He forgave those thieves. One accepted forgiveness and the other mocked him to the very end. In Luke 23, verse 43, Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise. He said that to one of the thieves. You see, that thief was never baptized, was he? And for those who believe that baptism is, is, is salvation, that cannot be. Baptism is a beautiful symbol of salvation, but it is a symbol of salvation because one of those thieves had a change of heart and he would be in the presence of the Lord Jesus that very day. He would be with Jesus in heaven. Well, another statement Jesus made in John chapter 19, verse 26, he said, Woman, behold your son. You know he was speaking to his mother Mary. And by doing this, he, he looked at John and he also said, Woman, behold your son, John. As he was doing this, he was entrusting the care of his mother into John's keeping. You see, the law, the Jewish law, required that the firstborn take care of, the, of, of his parents. And Jesus was obeying the, the, the earthly law to the very end of his, of his life. Early in his ministry, he had explained that we as followers of, of Jehovah, that we should be good citizens. We should render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and we should render unto God that which is God's. You know, I believe that we as human beings, are perhaps our greatest struggle, other than our struggle with, with sin and our self-centeredness, the, the, the center letter of sin is I, isn't it? S-I-N. It's all about me or you. But we as humans, we struggle with balance in so many aspects of our life today. My experience has been that people either work too hard or some don't work nearly hard enough. Some exercise way too much and many people don't seem to exercise enough. Some people are too careful with their finances and they become what we would call stingy. And others are too careless with their finances and they are wasteful with the, with the resources that God loans to them. Balance is so difficult. And I see here balance in our understanding too. So many people will see that Jesus was just a, truly a human being, not realizing that Jesus was truly the only non-adopted son of, of, the, of, of God our Father. And the son, the non-adopted son, Jesus, we call him the son. He's the creator of all that is visible and all that is invisible. Well, another statement that Jesus made was, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In Matthew chapter 27, verse 46, he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? See, Jesus not only knows how it feels to feel like you're separated from the Father, but he was actually separated from the Father. The great hymn writer wrote, the father turns his face away. Something that we have to accept by faith. It's a truth that we can't fully understand or even grasp. But I know there have been times in my life, and I, and I suspect in yours too, you've thought, where are you, God? I don't feel your presence. Well, God's presence has never left you. His presence never leaves me. But his presence, actually, the father's presence did leave the son when the sins of the world were placed, placed upon Jesus for the first time ever and never again, there was a separation between the Father and the Son, a love relationship that is beyond what you and I are capable of living out in this life at least. 
Another statement that Jesus made in, in John 19, verse 28, he said, I'm thirsty. You see, Jesus suffered as a human being. And the Bible says that he just cried out, I am thirsty. I've been told that dehydration is a horrible experience. And Jesus wasn't only thirsty, his body was being totally and completely and fully dried up into a piece of, of dried pulp. His death was beyond what we can imagine. Thirsty, yes, he was thirsty. And then John 19, verse 30, he said, It is finished, the sixth statement that we have recorded. It was a cry of victory. It was finished. And what was finished? Well, as we consider the life and ministry of Jesus, we can think of several things that were completed that day. His 33 years was finished. His ministry, his three years of ministry, his relationship with dozens of people intimately and hundreds or thousands of people in a more extensive, extended way. And his mandate from the Father was also finished as well. It was salvation's wondrous plan was complete. It was finished. And then Jesus said in Luke 23, verse 46, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. The final statement that we have from Jesus before his death, everything had been completed and now it was time to dismiss his own spirit. Jesus had previously made the statement that he would willingly lay down his life for his sheep. And, and that's precisely what he did. We're told that greater love has no human being than that one would lay down his life for another man or woman or boy or girl. Well, yes, the mission of the cross was finished, but there was much more. And I want for a few moments this morning to consider that there was more to the finished, for the finished product than just the cross. As important as the cross was, there was a second and there was a third aspect to all of this in salvation's wondrous plan. The second one, I'm sure you can easily guess, there was the cross. And then secondly, there was Easter Sunday morning, the resurrection. One young man said to his friend one day, he said, there ain't going to be no Easter this year. And his friend said, well, well, why not? Well, the student replied, you see, they found his body. Ha, ha, ha. And despite this irreverent humor, his friend displayed a measure of insight that is often missed by even many theologians. Did you know that there are many theologians who would call themselves Christians who were perfectly willing to assert the fact that Jesus did live, he existed, and he died, but he died, and that was it. And they would say, but it still represents a new beginning. He brought a new beginning so that Christianity somehow can go on nicely because it inspires us. And this friend's joke implied that without the resurrection, there would be no Easter and Christianity really is worthless. And you know what? That young man is exactly right. If they found the body, he would be precisely right. I want us to look at Paul's letter to... The, his first letter to the church at Corinth, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and beginning with verse 12, you're going to notice at least five or six or even seven truths that come that if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, then we have some very serious ramifications from that. 1 Corinthians 14, beginning with verse 12, Paul said, if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you still say there is no resurrection of the dead? And if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless. And so is your faith. Your faith is useless too. More than that, we are found to be false witnesses. We're liars, Paul said. We're false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Jesus from the dead. But if he did not, in fact, raise the dead, if he, in fact, did not raise Jesus, then the dead are not raised. And if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Those who have fallen asleep in Jesus, they're lost. They're lost people, the Apostle Paul said. He said, if only for this life we have hope in Christ, 
If that's it, then of all people we are to be most pitied. But, Paul said, if Jesus has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. You see, death came through a man. The resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made anew, but each in turn. Jesus, the first fruits, then when he comes, those who belong to him, then the end will come when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father.